thank you for joining me here tonight. My name is Alyssa Thomas from Penguin and Fish, where we make cute embroidery kits for the beginning crafter. And we are working on the flower garden embroidery again tonight. We're about halfway done. I'm hoping to get another quarter of it done tonight. We'll see how that goes. So thanks again. I see you guys starting to pop in. Hello, hello everyone. Uh, again, thank you for joining me. Uh, I am here every weeknight at 8.30 p.m. Central Time. That's 9.30 Eastern and 6.30 Pacific. And it's a time that we can relax and craft together. Uh, I typically work on projects from beginning to end so you can be part of the whole process along the way. Please ask your questions. Uh, feel free to uh, give your suggestions. <laughs> we are just here to hang out and uh, I'd love if you came and stitched with me. We are working on the flower garden tonight. Uh, this is my embroidery of the month. I have it printed out from the PDF. Uh, there we are. And uh, let's get going, you guys. Thanks for joining me. I'm gonna flip you around. All right, there's my finished one. Uh, and uh, here we are uh, tonight. There's my, my massive, massive floss starting to happen. I always have a little bit of a messy floss area. Okay, here we are. All right. Thank you guys for joining me. So it looks like I'm just looking on Facebook you guys, it's looking goofy. So let me know on Facebook if you guys can see me at all. It looks like I'm stuck on the front page. So it might, uh, Facebook might be a no-go tonight. I'm looking at, I don't know if you guys can hear me. So it might be a, a YouTube situation. So if you don't see it on Facebook, come to YouTube. Facebook like looks like it's not uh, playing too nice right now. So, all right, let's get this in the hoop. Uh, I'm going to just center it up again here. Yeah, it's goofy, you guys. It looks fine everywhere else. So, uh, if anyone is in the YouTube and uh, and the Facebook, let let them know that it's oh it's fine there. Okay, so so Catherine's saying it's fine, but can you see me actually working right now, or do you s just see the start screen? Because it looks like it's just on my side. It just looks like on the start screen, but maybe maybe it'll just look like that on my side. I don't know. All right, ah, the joys of all of this live video stuff. So all right, uh, we ended up with the watering can um, last night. So let's get started on this little chip monkey feller. And he is going to be done with the, um, the tan. So I actually think we have some here. There we go. Good. You can get a faster start that way. Oh, you're seeing me working. Okay. So you guys, if it's just, it's just my view then. So, okay, good. Good, good, good. That's good to hear. I'm glad you guys are seeing it. Okay. Hello from Alaska, Lynn. That's exciting. That's fun. I've not been to Alaska. Hello from Texas. That's Rebecca. Okay, Lynn says YouTube's all good. Okay, good to hear. Um, all right. I'm gonna weave in the ends, just like how we've been doing this whole time. If you look at my back, there are no knots on the back whatsoever. It is perfectly nice and clean. And that is because we are weaving in the ends. So to start, uh, start a new thread, I'm not tying a knot. I am weaving it three times. So that's the first time I'm just weaving it into as many stitches, grabbing as much as I can. That's the second. The second you can still pull and it will come out. It's that third. So here's the third. Third round of grabbing everything. Third weaving round that kind of hold locks everything in place. All right. And then we can get started. I am going to just try and cruise through this tonight. So we have been um, stitching like mad here. I'm hoping that we can get it completely done on Friday. So gosh, that's tomorrow already. 
Oh my gosh, that's tomorrow. This is a lot to stitch in that amount of time, but we'll see how we do. Maybe I'll stay a hair late tonight and get a little bit, a little bit more done. We'll see how that goes. Um, but I would like to get this done because I want to show you guys how to take off this stick and stitch. So this, this is that Selkie stick and stitch material. You can print the design directly to it, which is awesome, which means you skip the whole tracing uh, transferring method altogether. You can just print it onto this uh, stick and stitch paper and it sticks on your fabric like a sticker and it comes off in water. So that's awesome. <laughs> I, I love it. You know, I love it mostly just because it's so, so fast to take, to, to start stitching, right? You print it out, you stick it on, you're immediately stitching right away. Oh, Lynn, I'm so happy you're here too. Okay, yes, so if you guys are having any questions on stitches, uh, just let me know and and uh, feel free to join the Penguin and Fish Crafters group on on Facebook because then you can take a photo of what, what you're working on or maybe like what part you're having problems with, a certain stitch or something, and uh, we can walk you through it a little bit. All right, you guys, look, I just got one of these knots. Oh, no, I didn't. It just got twisted. I thought I thought I got a loopy knot. I think we had one of those a couple days ago, but those are, I think, the most common knots that you can get when you're embroidering, uh, where it's like a big loop, and then there's a knot holding the end of that loop together. Oh, they're annoying. They're so annoying. Uh, but I do have a little trick for getting them out. So if we get one of those later, uh, I'll show you how to do that again. You basically put your needle inside the loop and then pull on one side of the thread or the other, whatever, whatever brings the loop up to the needle and then it, it just pops right out. Uh, it almost always works, so that's that's awesome. All those little, little tricks help make uh, the process just more enjoyable, really. Uh, Rebecca's asking, how did you start embroidering and quilting? Uh, I started with cross-stitch. So I had a babysitter <laughs> come over. Oh, God, who knows? Maybe I was like, I don't know how old are you when you have babysitters? Like maybe I was seven or something and my brothers were, my brother was like five and I don't know. So young enough to have a babysitter come over and I know that they had, uh, she brought over a cross stitch and I was like hypnotized, I think, uh, by this cross stitch. So, um, you know, because I just, I still think cross stitch is so cool. You start with nothing on the page and then by all of these little X's, all of a sudden you have a whole picture. And I just thought that was the coolest thing. Um, so after that, I went to go get <laughs> my own cross stitches from Joann's and like, you know, they have like little holiday ornaments. That's kind of all they really have um, or like super ornate wildlife scenes or whatever. I don't know. I'm thinking it's a little bit better nowadays. Uh, but I started with cross stitching um, and then then got into knitting and uh, my grandma knit a lot and she crocheted. So knitting and crochet for sure. Uh, I didn't get into quilting until my mom got into quilting and she remembers it as being um, around 9-11. So that's when she started quilting, like took a quilting class and um, started quilting. So after she had been doing that for, I don't know, a, a year or maybe a little bit more, then I, I uh, started, um, I took a quilting class where she did and, and started quilting after that. And then I really got into it more after, um, after my first quilt market. So quilt market is uh, an international trade show. 
Uh, so where, where stores come to see what there is to buy. Uh, I went to one of those for embroidery and uh, got much more into quilting after kind of entering that world a little bit. And, and uh, much, much more into quilting since we started all of these, uh, these live videos. So I've been doing these live videos almost every day for about four years, <laughs> which is just crazy town. Um, but with uh, some of the projects that we've done here, like really, I suppose, the Splendid Sampler, I feel like with that project, I was really kind of digging into the quilting world quite a bit more. So I suppose, I suppose that's the long answer. <laughs> Maybe that's actually the short answer. Uh, I could, I could get a lot longer winded, I'm sure, on all those things. <laughs> but yeah, so, and I've just been on a quilting kick as of late, so that's why we keep, keep doing it. Uh, I do like peppering in embroidery for sure. I think embroidery is the perfect kind of breather project to have in between um, in between, or like even while you're working on a quilt, because a quilt is so involved. There are so many steps. They all take forever. <laughs> so it, it, it feels like a, that's like kind of a marathon. And sometimes you want that quick win of the sprint, right? And so I love, love, um, thrown in an, an embroidery week. I just, I just really like that. And I, and I think here it would be nice to do some other projects too. We've done a little bit of knitting here and even some drawing and painting. I, I'd like to do more of that. We're kind of, uh, the way we're doing it this year, which I've really been liking, and I think uh, it sounds like you guys are liking too, is I've been splitting up. I'm doing several projects at once in the evening here, but I'm splitting them up by weeks. So um, the other this week, the third full week of the month is always going to be our, we're going to stitch up our embroidery of the month. Uh, that's the flower garden. So this is the, this is, this pattern will go away at the end of May. Gosh, which is next week already. Crazy. Um, so uh, the third week, full week is always, always this. And then the other three weeks happen to be quilting projects right now. So I think once we finish one of those quilting projects, which gosh, who knows when that'll be, but, um, then we'll pepper in some other things. Like I want to do some smaller sewing projects. Like we have, we've been wanting to do that sketchbook cover with the zipper pocket in there. I, I love that project and it, and it's easy. It'd be a fun one to try. And just, just some other things that we've been talking about, like last night doing an embroidery where we, you know, add all the bling to it. You know what I mean? Just like all add all of the, like add beads and sequins and ribbon and, you know, and, and doing even a more detailed thing, like using like thread painting, like not just doing outlines, like filling in all the shapes, like doing some experimental, not experimental, but like some more in-depth embroidery, I suppose would be a good way of saying it. So I'd like to do some of those projects as well. And we'll filter those in. We'll take a break from the quilt every once in a while uh, to do some of these other fun, shorter projects. But yeah, I, I'm, I'm liking it split up. <laughs> yeah, Gretchen's saying, have some, some faith that we'll finish a quilt. I know, right? I'm actually very impressed at how many quilts we've finished here. Uh, usually the quilts just kind of sit around forever. I do have plenty of quilts sitting around still, but I am, I am hoping to maybe even start some more weekend, uh, events, uh, weekend live streams, uh, to finish up some of those projects, you know, where I just bind a quilt all day, you know? <laughs> Those things, those projects got to get done somehow at some point. Oh, Rebecca's saying that's why I love, uh, or she loves cross stitch too. And that's why she has a lot of the DMC and silk threads. Ooh, um, I don't think I have any, I've never stitched with silk threads before. Um, I do have some silk ribbon that would be fun to try some 
ribbon embroidery with ooh, but silk embroidery thread that sounds really fun all right i am i am testing my myself with the length of thread i i have here so let's let's i think it's time to weave this in i think that's all we can do uh with that first thread i just think it looks so cute on the back all right let's weave it in right here seems good enough so again i'm going to weave in back and forth three times and i'm really trying to get as much in in between the stitches as i can i want to grab as much as i can Ooh, this is oh it did i'm like this is gonna fall off the needle and it did one one of my strands came off the needle like, uh, whenever i get the thread this short i always accidentally de-thread it annoying so I, I like uh weaving it in when i have a little bit more on there ah, but i always want to get as many stitches as i can out of it too okay i think i have a tiny bit oh this is a pretty good length yet so this is my scrap of brown from earlier oh from the beak i'm like when would he, we have used the, the brown but it, it was in the beak and the cardinal's beak and eye so we have um, quite a bit here yet Probably not enough to finish this whole thing. I think I'm going to start at his his little like tail furs and then I will end up about there and then I can go around the rest of the face. I think that's a good mapping. Um, I always like mapping out how I want to do it next. Oh, Bar Barbara. Barbara's saying that uh, on YouTube that I enjoy binding a quilt. It takes forever, but I like doing it. Barbara, that is one of my favorite parts of a quilt. I, it's a love or hate thing for people, but I just love it. Um, I love it until the end when I realize, oh, I have to make a label still. Because <laughs> in my head, the um, binding is the last step and it really finishes it off and you just get to chill and do some hand stitching. I love it so much. Um, but yeah, I always think it's the last thing and then I get done and I'm like, oh, I didn't make a label yet. And oftentimes I don't just because I want to be done. But um, I don't know. The more I put labels on, the more I like that idea. It's just it's just neat to later see the quilt that you made in, you know, oh, this is from 2007. And what was I doing in 2007? Like, it's just kind of... It, it, it's neat. It's a good touch. And I'm trying to get comfortable with putting labels on, on the quilts, even though, man, I wish it was already done with <laughs> by the time I did the binding. Next time, maybe I'll have to put it on before the binding's done. But again, I, I just always forget. You're trying to... F oh, Rebecca's trying to finish a Pokemon quilt. Oh, gosh, that sounds awesome. Oh, but is... Oh no, you recently learned his bed is a queen size. Oh man, so that's when you just put more border on. <laughs> so if you haven't put the binding on or anything uh, quite yet, I would just add add a bigger border. <laughs> that's That's an easy way of doing it. Oh, uh, Gretchen's saying it's very rare that I want to repeat a quilt, but after seeing everyone's granny squares, um, she's going to make a second one with different colors. That's awesome. So the granny square quilt, that is the project that we work on the first full week of the month. And I think we're all really enjoying it. It, it just, it's kind of magic how pretty these blocks come out and and they're just fun to make so those the cutting that took me a long time uh, to cut all the strips that that it's made out of but ugh, they're just so cute and yes everyone's is so different uh, people are posting them in the penguin and fish crafters group and they are all different um but you know it's all the same pattern but they end up being all all different because of color choices and stuff. I just, that's always fascinating to me. I love it. All right, still trying to cruise through this. I think there's a lot more to this little chipmunk 
a lot more stitches than I was thinking. I am still trying to get at least this area done. I would love to, I'd love to get like all of this done tonight, but that seems unlikely. That seems like a lot. <laughs> But again, I'd like to finish this tomorrow, including taking off the stick and stitch stabilizer, embroidery stabilizer. So uh, I can't do that unless we're done stitching. But actually taking it off doesn't take all that long either. So um, we might just stay however long it takes tomorrow and finish. If you don't mind hanging out with me a little longer. Okay, um, I think I'm just gonna, meh, I'll jump up here and finish the head first. I was deciding whether I should continue down here and come up and around, but I think this is a smaller kind of leap that you won't see on the back of the fabric as, as much as, as if I jump from here to there. So I'm, I'm making some smaller stitches here just because I kind of want to get the shape of his ear. I thought it, there was a, like a little arc into it, but I suppose one big stitch would have done the job just fine too. All right, and we have his little, his eyes are French knots. I think we'll, oh my gosh, am I going to have enough thread for that? I might not have enough thread for French knots too. Let's, let's try and do the French knots now. Since French knots are a bit hard to do if you don't have enough thread. So let's give it a go again. So I'm going to show you how to do this again. So we're coming up on one side of the dot. I don't want to go in the same hole uh, as I'm coming out of here. And to help me not do that, I, I, do, I come up on one side of the eye and I go down on the other side of the eye. So uh, I'm coming up. I'm putting it on my flat surface so I can have access to my left hand. Uh, I'm going to hold the thread in my left hand and I'm going to point the needle towards my left hand like this. So away from the fabric. Then I'm going to wrap it around twice. Uh, I'm going to put my finger on those loops uh, just so that they stay put really. Then I'm just going to kind of whoosh my thread out of the way. And now I'm going to turn the needle and point it towards the the fabric it was pointed away now i'm turning it and pointing towards i'm still holding those loops now i'm going in the opposite side of that dot so not the same hole the opposite side and i'm only putting the needle in about halfway before i let go then i'm going to pull those threads so they're right up up against the fabric on the needle there and then i'm going to just hold those loops with my thumb. I just want to hold those in place so that they don't get away from me and make a weird big loop. And there we go. Our first little French knot. I'm going to jump and do this second French knot. And then I'm going to attempt to get the rest of around his face with the little amount of thread I have left. We'll see. We'll see how I do on that. I will probably do that front that forward and back stitch uh, combination just because it does conserve your thread right at the end here all right but there's his two cute little eyeballs all right let's do it little back stitch how oh, these little chipmunks they eat all of our food actually the squirrels the squirrels are the worst with, we got the uh, we got the fence up in our garden, so that has taken care of the rabbits, although we had to make it double high um, one year. So our fence is uh, twice as high as it was before. Uh, but those squirrels, they still get in and can eat everything, so that's a big bummer. Oh, oh good! So Lynn's saying, ooh, the French knot, thank you for helping with what I was doing wrong. Oh, you were doing two of the things wrong and sometimes all three. Oh, Lynn, good. I'm so glad I could help. So um, a couple nights ago, I think it was Tuesday. So if you guys watch Tuesday's replay, you can fast forward to wherever. But I, I show how to do a French knot. Uh, it's when we're working on these up here. And uh, there's 
if you aren't getting the French knot, like if you're struggling with the French knot, you're probably doing one to three things wrong. And I go through those, those three things, but good. I'm glad, I'm glad that helped Lynn. All right, we made it. And I definitely, and I still even have enough thread to weave in the end. I did get my stitches a little bit bigger. I could have made that a little rounder there, but I'm fine with exactly how it is. All right, let's weave in the end and we are done. Oh, I guess we're not quite done with the little chipmunk. We, we have to make his nose and mouth, but those are pink. So I think let's get a little bit of the pink out. I think the rest of the pink is for the, the peony. And actually, I think I messed up a little bit. I think these, I think these dots were supposed to be pink too, but I made them purple. <laughs> so uh, we'll try and do the rest of these, these pink, or maybe I'll do a couple purple and a couple pink just to make it balance out. There's like, there's two little French knots there. That's what it was supposed to be pink. Um, but oh well. So we'll we'll do a few pink and a few purple. That'll probably be the last thing that we actually do, those the remaining French knots. Okay, let's grab some pink. All right, I'm gonna grab the three strands of thread again. So I've been using three strands out of the six. So this is six strand embroidery floss and I've been using three strands this whole entire time. Uh, and here's how you separate them again. You just get one. So I'm, I just have one little piece of the thread and I'm just holding the rest and just yanking it out and it, it just should all relax after that. It looks like it's gonna be a crazy knot, but it, it's perfectly fine, Zoop. It just bounces back. And uh, uh, it's just a really fast method of getting the, the floss separated. But I'm doing three strands and I just like the look of that. So the different number of strands means the different thickness of thread. And we went over that a different thickness of your stitches. So we went over that a little bit. I've, I made this floss thickness guide, but you can see like right here, this is with six strands of floss. And then this is just with one strand. So you can definitely see a difference. And here's like one strand, two strand, three strands, all the way up to six. And you can see just, just the total difference of the weight of the line basically. Uh, so that's, you can really, have some fun with that. You can play with different thicknesses, like things further back might be one strand while things further in the foreground might be, you know, four strands. Uh, or if you have like a really wispy something like some, you know, like, like field grass or something like that, maybe you want that to be with one strand. Whereas like a big, bold, uh, sunflower, maybe you want more strands. I don't know. It's, it's just, there's, there's room for creativity and, and opportunity uh, with the number of strands you use. I, I'm usually pretty consistent. I'll pick a number of strands and that's what I'll use throughout the whole piece. But again, that would be one of those fun things that we should try uh, one of these times with an embroidery pattern. Just what would this look like if we totally varied the amount, the amount of thread? I think that'd be a fun project for us. And I think I'm a little up too high. His nose is down here. So I'm going to weave in one more uh, bit so I don't have to make that big of a leap. And this is just like a couple little baby stitches and we'll be done with, with him. Oh, Linza says, I'm so excited to uh, integrate embroidery more on my quilts. That is, I, I, I want to do that too. <laughs> I, I've been trying to do that a little bit more as well. And we've done some projects like the I Love Home quilt. I mean, that was already probably two years ago uh, that did have a lot of embroidery in, but I would love to do more. Actually, I was thinking one of our projects next year, I would like to stitch up our entire alphabet of embroidery patterns and make a like a, a whole alphabet quilt out of that. Um, that was the first real entry into embroidery and, um, quilting, like big entry, uh, was when I made that quilt, gosh, like, oh my God, maybe 10 years ago, 
gosh, has it been 10 years? I don't know, maybe. <laughs> uh, but I made it, I have uh, embroidery patterns of cute little animals, and I have one for each letter of the alphabet. And I made this super cute quilt out of it. So I'm, I'm thinking, you know, that might be fun to do next year. And I'd get a bunch of fabric printed too. And so we could all have like cute matching fabric for it. I don't know. That's, that's an idea uh, for, for one of the projects for next year. So I don't know if that sounds interesting, let me know. And uh, I am trying to think of what comes next after, after the projects that we're finishing now. Definitely open to suggestions for sure. Okay, he's done. Our little dude down there is done. We got his little nose and mouth in there. He's happy. Okay, uh, how are we doing? Oh, we got a good half hour yet. So that's that's promising. So I, I'm still going to try and get as much of this done as I can. I think I'm going to start with these uh, these stems and leaves right here. And the reason, again, I'm going to start there is because I have some stitches here that I can weave in the end. If I start on this peony up here, I don't have any stitches on the back to weave in the ends. So I would have to do a different technique um, using that away knot that we did right at the way at the beginning of this project. Uh, and that's just, I don't know, I way much more like <laughs> weaving into the ends of the stitches, uh, the backs of the stitches. Okay, so I'm just checking checking out the pattern. Uh, all of these are, oh no, N not these leaves up here. These leaves up here are dark green. I think they belong to this this uh, peony up here. So it's just it's just these little stemmy guys down here, and then this little stem. Okay, we can do that. That is in the lighter green. Let's see if I have any of that cut. Oh, I do. So here we go. Uh, I already have this cut to the 24 inches or so. I'm going to take out the three strands of thread again from here. One. Two. If it's still bunched up like this after I just kind of run my fingers through it. That way I can for sure prevent knots. And three. Okay. Let's get those together. So these ends are a little bloopy. They're kind of going every which direction. So I'm just going to trim them like that. So they're all clean and lined up really nicely. Get rid of those guys. Okay, then I'm doing that pinch method again. So I'm pinching my thread end. And as I unpinch, the moment I see the thread there, I'm going to get the needle right on top. And that seems to work. Well, for me, I do want to get some needle threaders uh, in the shop, though, because I know that that's also that's always helpful having those those around. Um, all right, I'm going to weave into this blue. Oh, thanks, Kathy. I'm excited for next month's embroidery of the month. I have to take some photos of it yet, and I'm I'm getting. I'm getting the announcement newsletter ready, so make sure to get on the uh, uh, newsletter from our website. Um, that's where I do the announcing, basically, uh, when, when everything's live and ready to go. That's probably the... Except for here. <laughs> I mean, I, I tell you guys most everything first, but... Um, the Facebook group and the newsletter, those are the, you're going to see stuff there before you see it on like Instagram and, and other places. Okay. How should we go about doing this? I think I'm going to, all right, I'm mapping it out again. So I, I think I'm going to do these leaves, crawl up this stem. And then I'm going to jump over here because there's this little stem yet. And then I'll jump back down and get these other um, leaves and stems, assuming I, um, assuming I still have thread left. All right. And these are a little goofy mapping it out because there's three parts. There's the, the vein here. So I'm going to actually end up at the top, which was maybe a silly idea. 
You can't map it out perfectly all the time, I suppose. Maybe I'll just jump up to the vein in the second leaf, finish that leaf, and then come back down and finish this bottom leaf. Then I'll be at the bottom of the stem, and that will lead me back up. Okay, that's what we're doing. Jumping up to here. I'd like to get at least this guy done done tonight. And really, if we can get some of these upper leaves, maybe we just focus on leaves and stems today, and then tomorrow we can crank out um, these little clover guys, little purple chain stitches like him over here. And, um, and then get this peony last. We'll see how that goes. Oh, your yard is overloaded with chipmunks this year. Oh, you've seen five at one time. Oh my gosh. Yeah, that's a lot. Oh, we haven't had to, been able to really have a bird feeder for a while. Um, Barbara's saying, saying that about the chipmunks, but I haven't been able to have a bird feeder in a while because the, the squirrels, it's squirrels for us. They just I'd have to change it every, like, add more food fully every day because the squirrels just get it all. And we've tried, like, little contraptions to keep them out, but, ugh, they just figure it out. Sneaky buggers. But, yeah, so the, the chipmunks are at the front door uh, running back and forth, stealing stuff, and uh, the... Squirrels are everywhere else. Stealing stuff. Oh, thanks, Lynn. Lynn says I got Facebook done and she's signing up for the newsletter. Yay. With the newsletter, you get a free, uh, um, our free Picnic Pals embroidery pattern too. All right, I'm jumping down to this leaf now. Yep, I will not have enough thread for all this. I'll have to get more for sure. Ooh, you have black squirrels in Kansas. That's interesting. Ours are just the plain old uh, gray squirrels, although we do have an, an albino one in the neighborhood, so uh, I get to see, see that guy every once in a while. Oh, that's interesting, Lynn. Lynn says Alaska squirrels are so much smaller than the ones in the lower 48. Huh. Squirrels are crazy here now. One comes on our porch. Oh, I swear to, uh, to tease the dog. Yeah. <laughs> if I was a squirrel, that would be... The highlight of my day, I would think. <laughs> ah, teasing the dog. That's fun. I think my mom would call them tree rats. Alrighty, and that leaf is done. I'm going to come up this uh, stem here. I'm sideways like this just because uh, it's easier for my left hand to feel the stitches and I always have my left hand like actually feeling where the needle comes through. I'm actually even dragging. Uh, I gotta see what I'm doing here. But I'm, I'm, I'm feeling the thread. I'm actually pushing the thread out of the way with my back hand while I do the next stitch. So then I have less of a chance of it getting all knotted up. So I'm, I'm actually you know, having a very active backhand here. All right, I think we're just gonna make it to the to the top here. Maybe I'll make it to this little itty bitty stem over here. But I think these bottom ones we're gonna have to start a new a new thread. So me turning turning my piece is almost always so the back of my left hand can feel the stitches. And feel the needle coming through. Ooh, 
Ooh, Kathy says they have black squirrels in California too. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah, it's it's fun. My uh, uh, in-laws live in California, and it's funny. They have all they have. They uh, everything is just a hair different. Like, you know, they don't have blue jays, but they have scrub jays, which are basically like monster blue jays. <laughs> Uh, everything's a little bit bigger and scarier. All right, I do have a little bit left, so I'm going to just jump down here and see how much I can get out of this this thread yet. I think I can probably get the rest of the stem. And then, oop, shoot. Lost the thread again. I always do that when I get, uh, when my thread gets a little, little short. That's when I accidentally unthread it and uh someone mentioned this last night and I, I i keep doing this but when i say thread and when i say floss i'm talking about the same thing um i'm not using those as two different terms uh i just mean the embroidery floss i think it's just a habit to call it thread but i keep keep losing it right at the end here. All right, I think this will be my last stitch with this thread. Although now I bet you I can get like one more out of here. Maybe I can get all the way up this uh, this vein here. I'm gonna try doing that. I'm gonna try and sneak out a few more stitches. Just two more, we can do it. Wow, that thread's lasting. I thought I was gonna run out right here, but we got a whole lot more done with it. Yay. Ooh, and we are almost completely done with this color. We just have this little bit there left. Oh, and the, the outside of this leaf. And uh, we are done for this color in the whole quilt. Or the quilt. The whole piece. Um, the whole embroidery here. So we're done with the blue. Oh, we're done with the red. And uh, we will soon be done with this green. That's always kind of fun when you know you finished a color up. All right. Next up, I just need a little bit more and I think I, yeah, I have the other three strands from uh, what we just took earlier. So that's good. I don't have to get more strands. Ugh, that's a pretty fuzzy end. I'm going to snip that. Get a nice new sharp, sharp clean end that'll help thread it. All right. Let's uh, weave in the ends there in this lower stem here. We'll finish up that leaf and we will be on our way. Ooh, and we still have like 15 minutes or so. Ooh, we might go over a little bit. I think I think we may go over just because then we won't go over as long tomorrow. We'll see how that goes. Uh, I, I Just because I really want to finish this sunflower yet. Or not sunflower, what would this be? Like a lazy, or um, not a lazy daisy, a daisy. <laughs> or a uh, black eye Susan. It could be, again, whatever, whatever you want. I suppose it's yellow or it could be a cone flower too, like a purple cone flower or something. I'm doing it yellow. So what would that be? A, a daisy? Like a yellow daisy. That's what I'm going to make it. All right. Rotating to find the best spot for my left hand again. It's kind of awkward right in the middle for my hand. It doesn't know where to go. It can barely reach. All right. Coming down the side. It's definitely looking more and more finished. I think getting that watering can in and the, the um, chipmunk, I think that that put it over the edge of all right, now we're cruising on this thing. 
So, uh, we, this is day four, so we spent at least four hours on, on this embroidery, so I would call this at least a, I'm going to say, a, let's call it like a six hour embroidery minimum, unless you're like just super fast. <laughs> so, um, it, if it takes longer than that, it should. I mean, I am, I am just really, really cruising through this, you know, without breaks. I'm just going at it. So, uh, if this takes you a little bit longer than the six hours, uh, that's makes sense. <laughs> Especially if you're doing fancier stitches and stuff. I mean, you could be working on this for a year, really. If you're filling in all of these shapes with stitches, I mean, you can make you can make embroidery be as big of a project or as, as small as a project as you want. You know, one of the fun things we've done with embroidery before is we've colored it in with crayons and colored pencils uh, before stitching it, and that looked really cool. That would be a fun fun project. This one I would I would have actually been really fun for that, uh, but that could be you know something that we do again here. I don't think I got this stitch here. So we'll have to pick a pick a pattern to do that with again. Something like that. If we're going to do something out of the ordinary, I will definitely let you guys know so you can prepare. Like I'll I'll send a newsletter out with like what supplies you might need to grab, like crayons or whatever. Um, I, I try not to just spring those on you without you know, having anything prepared for it. All right, last stitch of this green. All right. Uh, let's just weave it into this cardinal belly. Now I'm thinking maybe we should do the dark green quick, like get some of those leaves done. So maybe we won't actually get this yellow, um, coneflower daisy done. I don't know. We gotta decide. Let's let's look at this and see where we want to go next. Okay, so we could do the yellow. Um, although it would be nice to just do the stem before we do the yellow because I always like doing the things that are further back first, if I can, because then my stitches lay over the top of them a little bit nicer. So it would be nice to do this green, but if we're going to do the green, we might as well hop up and do these other greens, because uh, these leaves are that green, but I don't know. I think it'll be more fun to do the yellow. Let's, let's do the yellow. Uh, the yellow, and then uh, um, maybe we'll even try and get those, those French knots in today yet too. That'd be awesome. Okay, uh, la, 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 yellow. I think I have some already. Oh yeah, good. So I have a nice big piece here. We have that little bit of yellow up here that we used earlier. So yeah, let's just go around the edge. I think we'll, I'll still weave into, I think I'll weave into this leaf and we'll just start on this petal here versus like starting up here. Um, just cause I wanna be able to weave in those ends yet. Thread this guy. Debbie says, yes, do the yellow. Yeah, it'll feel more substantial to get a leaf done, I think. Or not a leaf, a um, flower. Okay, we'll weave into this guy here. Still looking pretty clean on the back. Okay, let's let's just start right at the right at the end here. I'll leave like room for like one little stitch maybe. Okay. These are a lot of kind of straightaways. So um, when I have like a straight line like this, I tend to make my stitches a little bit bigger versus if I'm going around like a, a tight arc like that, I will make my stitches smaller. Uh, we talked a little bit about that uh, a couple days ago. It's just uh, 
with every stitch you make, your stitches are actually just straight, right? Uh, so any stitch you make, it, you're not making like a curved stitch. Each stitch is just straight. And you're making curves throughout the piece by having just changing the angles of those uh, stitches as you go, right? So the more stitches you do, the more opportunity to shift that angle. Uh, so if you do more stitches around a curve, you're gonna get the effect all those like short little angles uh, give like the effect of a curve, even though they are made up of just straight stitches. So that's why around around curves, I tend to add a few more stitches in there. Whereas these straightaways, might as well do some big stitches, get it done faster because it won't affect the shape, really. Ooh, this is a bright yellow. I think this is going to look nice here. All right, I'm just going to... I think this position will be a little bit easier. Again, to get my hand on the back there. Oh yeah, like a black eye Susan. Okay, yes, that's 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 what we're calling it. This is gonna be a black eyed Susan. That's I think I don't remember if I even mentioned that earlier. I think that's what I had the vision in my head was black eyed Susan, but I just couldn't think of the name black eyed Susan. Yeah, that that'll be pretty with the yellow. That's that's what we um we had wildflowers at our house growing up and they're always just so pretty and they always had these black eyed Susans in. We always had tulips come up uh, every spring and they're always fun and you know purple clover everywhere and and my mom's favorite is uh, the peonies, and I really love the peonies too. They're just so pretty. Um, big cotton candy poofs. Um, but yes, yeah, so that's why we got the pink peony up, up top there. Bright, fun, happy flowers. Still trying to cruise through this pretty quickly. I think we will do those little French knots yet too before we do the stems. Once we switch to that dark green, we'll stick with that dark green. And I think uh, then we'll finish another color. Oh, we're gonna we're gonna actually finish two colors. We're gonna finish this yellow because this is all that's yellow is is this uh, black eyed Susan, uh, and then we'll also finish that tan color, the brown, because the uh, little French knots up here. That's it for the brown. Then we just have uh, the dark green, the purple, and the pink. And the pink we've oh we've only have right there on his nose so far. Uh, the but the pink is gonna be the peony. So that that will all be that pretty pink color. Ugh, we're going to run out of this yellow before I'm done here. I think we'll need to cut a new piece too because this was our, we're still on our first piece of yellow. The second half of our first piece. This is the second three strands. Oh, you'd love to grow some peonies. Uh, Rebecca's saying she'd love to grow peonies. Yeah, they have some beautiful shades. Yeah, I think my, my, Parents have like just the pretty pink peonies. I love those. And then like a deeper pink, like a dark fuchsia. And then um, they have some white ones as well. But those pale pink ones, those are my favorite. The ones that get like really fluffy. There's all sorts of peonies too. Like some some just open more like a f other flowers and, and stuff. Almost like, almost kind of like big apple blossoms, I feel like. 
but I like the frilly, poofy, uh, big pink ones. This will look nice once we get the dark um, French knots in next to the yellow. Oh, Terry says she's cutting the granny square quilt strips today. Yes, there are lots of them. Ugh, that's, that's the bummer part of that quilt. But, you know, if you just... I, we were doing it, I was only doing it in our stints, you know, just in the evenings here, right? And it was just taking ages and ages. But if you, if you got working in, you know, wherever you do your crafting and got some music on and just, or an audio book or something and just started cutting them, it would, uh, it, it'd go by pretty quick. And then you could, then you could like pretend that it never happened, <laughs> that you didn't take all that time to cut cut the fabric and they would just like it'd be there and done <laughs> I think that's how I have to tackle uh, tackle cutting all the fabric that's one of my least favorite parts and there was a lot of it in that quilt but man from then on all the sewing for the granny squares quilt uh, again that's the, the project that we do the first week of the month oh, it's so fun it's a surprise every time how they turn out and they're just all so adorable. I, I just love them. All right, we are almost out of thread, and I think no matter what I do, I'm going to get need a new piece to finish the rest of this. So I am going to, yeah, look, at I, I don't have that much left. So I'm going to finish these two stitches, and instead of jumping to the other side to get a few more, I'm going to just end it here. Then I'm not leaving a, like a big jump on the back. So this will be the last one on this side. Oh, it's pretty on the back. Uh, so it, it's actually really pretty. It's almost like um, a stem stitch, like a messy stem stitch on the back from doing doing the back stitches on the front. And I actually really like the thickness of it. That, that would be a good... If you're looking to play around with stitches, uh, different ones that I'm doing, mine are mostly just back stitches on this project. But again, you can do whatever stitches you want but just looking at the back, doing a stem stitch or a big, like a, even a chain stitch, some fatter stitch on the front for this yellow flower, I think would be really pretty. Or even just using more strands of floss, like if you did the six strands of floss um, for that part. Uh, as you move up with the number of strands of floss, like if you get the thicker, thicker, uh, like you're gonna stitch with all six because you want a thicker line versus a thinner line. You know, like what we were talking about earlier. Uh, one thing to know is that when you're, if you're stitching with all six uh, threads in the floss here, it can be pretty difficult to pull the thread through your fabric, especially if you're using a tightly woven, like a nice quilting fabric. Uh, that will be very hard. It, you'll like, especially if you're making a lot of stitches, you will get a sore hand for sure. So that's why maybe in, if you want a thicker stitch, it might be instead of using all six strands to get that thicker stitch, you might just want to use a different stitch that inherently looks thicker. Like a stem stitch um, we don't have any of those in, in this one, but that stitch, you are putting basically two stitches next to each other. So you're already, by doing that, making your stitches twice as wide, right? Um, because you're having two next to each other in, instead of just the one. So if you want a thicker stitch, that might be a way to go. And same with like a chain stitch, which is very similar to our single chain stitches that we did here, but it's just a row of those stitches. That would be another, where did I weave in? Oh, at the bottom. Okay, I guess I'm coming up this side now. Um, but a row of chain stitches are double wide as well, like because you have the thread on both sides. So those would maybe be better options than using all six strands of thread, because uh, you'll still be able to pull the thread through easily through the fabric. Do you know if I could uh, um, 
sharpened the embroidery, little embroidery scissors. I have an old set that was your mother-in-law's and are very blunt. Okay, so Dee Dee's asking that on Facebook. Uh, I have not done that before. However, there is a scissors sharpener guy in town. Um, so uh, if you have like a knife sharpener guy, uh, call him up, or her, obviously, uh, to see if they can do scissors sharpening. And, and I would ask about that. So I have actually a whole... I'll find out about this soon, Dee Dee, because I have a whole pile of... Um, a whole pile of s small little scissors that need sharpening. Um, there'll be like just one little spot that they're, that they're blunt or like, you know, I'll be, or, you know, if you cut through something that you didn't mean to, and then you have that one little spot and you know, that's a huge bummer if you're like cutting ribbon or something and you just can't get that one spot. So I have, I have three or four scissors like that, uh, that I've been meaning to, bring in um and test out this um scissors cutter guy i haven't gone to him yet but i have a recommendation from a friend so we'll see i'll, I'll bring in um some smaller embroidery scissors and and see what he can do i have a vintage vintage a couple vintage scissors too it might be fun to give those a go too we'll see i'll, I'll for sure let you guys know how that goes Oh, yes, you guys. So uh, Rebecca's bringing this up. So next week, next week's project is the Aurifil block of the month, the quilting, the, the quilt block of the month. So uh, we are working on that project. I am actually one of the designers for that project. My block will be released in July. So July's my block. So gosh, that's coming up quick. Um, so they are released the 15th of the month. So Maze, Maze was released uh, last week, last weekish, And uh, um, we're going to work on that next week. So the last week, the last full week of the month um, is when we work on the Aurifil project, the Aurifil block of the month. So Aurifil is a thread company and they're putting on this this project. So I did see it. It looks, I have not printed out the pattern yet, but just looking at it, I suspect it's foundation paper piecing. I, I don't know that for a fact, but it looked that way. So um, I'll look at it more um, and we will, we'll work on that next week. Oh, Lynn is asking, do iron-on patterns work well? Has anyone tried them? So all of our patterns and our kits um, have an iron-on transfer in. So I am uh, very familiar with them. And I love them. Uh, they're so fast. So to me, it's a fast version of, of this. So when I, when I don't... When I don't have an iron-on pattern um, and I want to just get going quick, I will I will use this uh, sulky stick and stitch stabilizer, and that's like that's basically if I have a a digital download. So if I'm getting a paper pattern or a digital a digital printable pattern, I will either trace it or use this. But if I have the opportunity to use the iron-on transfer, and like I said, all our paper patterns have an iron transfer and our kits all have an iron-on transfer, um, I will use that because it's just fast. Um, one thing you'll want to do, uh, here's a tip for an iron-on transfer. First of all, make sure to, if there's any type on it anywhere, uh, like I know on ours it says, this is the iron me pattern. Um, make sure to cut that off because that will transfer as well. And you're going to want to put a paper towel down on your ironing board or your iron ironing surface uh, because otherwise the transfer will probably go all the way through your fabric um, because, you know, there's holes in the fabric and it will go on your ironing board. So you'll definitely want to put like a little, a little paper towel down there too. But yeah, they're fast. Uh, and and easy. You also want to preheat your fabric, and all I mean by that is warming it up 
with the iron for, you know, like a second, just pressing it before you, you put the design on. It can be a little like scary feeling because, you know, it's, it's more permanent. You're getting it down on there. Um, but man, it's fast. You can also use them more than once. You can use them a couple times. Each time you have to hold it down a little bit longer, but um, they're pretty slick, I think. Okay, I'm going to get my three strands from here and then we will make those. I know we're running a bit late, but I'm going to try and get these French knots done yet tonight. And then I think we'll end it there. So we do have quite a bit to do tomorrow. So I think I'm just going to plan on being here a little late tomorrow. So we'll just see how long it goes. <laughs> So versus um, going another day because, you know, next week we'll be working on the different project. Um, I think we'll just try and stay and finish this tomorrow. We'll see. We'll see how it goes. And, uh, and uh, you know, if you don't want to stay <laughs> awake with me that long, the replay will be up. So you can fast forward to the end on on saturday and then see how we took off this stick and stitch if you want to do that that's the nice thing you can just fast forward can't do that now all right uh pile of french knots let's just start at one and work our way around So for French knots, for me, it's a lot of setting it down and picking it back up. I know, you know, people have their different ways of doing French knots. And maybe they can do it without setting it down. But man, I need to get my left hand in there to help me out. Oh, this is going to be so cute with these French knots. Oh, Rebecca's saying it is a, a paper pieced block, the um, the Aurafil block of the month. So next week, next week, if you want to learn how to do some foundation paper piecing on a quilt, and if you don't know what that is and you want to find out, uh, we'll be going through that whole process with with the block or with the Aurafil block, and it's free. So the Aurafil project is free. Um, they release their, the blocks every 15th of the month, and there's, a, there's one block per month. The theme of it is the colors of Italy, and uh, uh, it's like a different color theme each month in a different Italian um, city or region. And if you go to... They post about it on their blog, although it's a little... You got to dig a little bit, but uh, it's Aura Buzz is the blog. So if you go A U R I B U Z Z dot com, I'm thinking, uh, that's their blog. So they blog a lot, though. So you have to you have to find the image that says that it's the block of the month. Um, but yeah, it should be pretty recent. Uh, so then if you click that, it'll talk about the designer. And if you scroll way, 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 way to the bottom, uh, then you will find the block and then you can download it. It's a, it's a, like a printable PDF download that you just click. But yeah, so I will be doing that this weekend. I'll be downloading that and checking it out. So Monday next week, we will pick out some fabric, uh, you guys are always helpful um, for me deciding what fabrics to use. Uh, that's always a little bit of a challenge, right? And, I, and I've, I've made it a challenge for myself. Um, I, I have one bin of fabric and I have to use, I have to use fabrics from there. <laughs> that's the challenge. So it was a little tricky uh, some months, but um, we'll see how, how this month goes. And then we'll get started. I'll print out the design, I'll have it ready and I'm excited. I really, really love foundation paper piecing. 
So we'll talk about some of the tools and uh, you really don't need anything special for tools, but there are special tools that exist that make it a little bit easier and we'll, we'll talk about, talk, we'll do it with those tools and without. Okay, last little baby French knot. I am tempted to do this stem, but I think I'll wait for that because um, we have all these other flower or leaves that are the same color. I might actually do the flowery things first and then go back and do the leaves because I'm kind of jumping around a lot for these leaves. Um, and it'd be nice to have other stitches that I can duck underneath and move around, maneuver through uh, for those leaves. So we'll see. See what we feel like tomorrow. Right now, we're just gonna weave in these ends. Oop, and that's the, that's it for the tan, and that's it for the uh, the yellow. So we are coming along here. We, we did get that next quadrant done, and that's what I was, what I was hoping to do tonight. So there we go. Little flower, little chippy monk, and yep. So tomorrow, tomorrow we're just gonna finish no matter what, okay? So we will we'll do this last little quadrant. That's about the same amount as what we did today, maybe a little bit more. And we'll stay a little bit longer to take off the stick and stitch stabilizer. We're also gonna press it right away, which will uh, dry it out because we will be getting this wet tomorrow. Uh, I think it'll be fun. I love, I love that process, it's a fun way to way to end an embroidery. So, all right, I'm gonna flip you around and we'll call it an evening here. All right, hello again, everyone. All right, so let me show you how far we got. It's always interesting to see it next to a person. I think you can get a better sense of the size. It's getting all fleshed out, all filled out uh, out there. So I'm excited. Uh, I'll take it out of the hoop. If I remember, I didn't take it out of the hoop. Um, just now, but we'll, we'll just, I don't know, we'll leave it. I, I tend to like taking it out of the hoop so it doesn't crinkle the edge as much, but ugh, if you forget a night, that doesn't matter at all. <laughs> so thanks again, guys, for joining me. Uh, be sure to get on the newsletter if you want to uh, see what the next embroidery of the month is going to be soon. Uh, that's where we kind of announce everything that's coming out. We're going to have some new products come out soon as well. Uh, share your work on the Penguin and Fish Crafters group on, on uh, Facebook. And uh, thanks for being here on YouTube and Facebook. And I'd love if you clicked and subscribed. It's awesome chit-chatting with you guys in the evening here. And I appreciate you hanging out with me. I really do have fun. Best part of the day. <laughs> All right. So have a great evening, guys. I will see you tomorrow again here at 8.30 p.m. Central. Good night.